Good day, friends. Justin Waterfield here with Long and McQuaid for the first in a series of live casts uh, about the Holiday Gift Guide. And the purpose of these live casts is to help people um, shop for the musicians on their holiday shopping lists. Every year, Long and McQuaid make sure they come out with a holiday gift issue uh, that basically highlights a whole bunch of different products, um, some of which are on holiday special, um, you know, great gift ideas for all kinds of musicians. And the video component of this uh, that we're going to be starting today is just some specialists from Long McQuaid, like myself, taking you through some of our favorite items and just sort of explaining it to to you as if you were somebody who's not a musician, somebody who has no idea what to get the guitar player or the drummer or the keyboard player uh, in their lives and really needs a, a good foundation and a, a place to start. So to that end, uh, we're not going to get super technical about the sort of the ins and outs of the products. It's more going to be about why, uh, you know, some musician might want this product. And hopefully that will give you, uh, sort of inspire you to head down to your long, local Long & McQuaid or jump online and order it from our store uh, with the confidence knowing that this is going to be a good gift for the musician in your life. So just want to start off here by saying that this live cast is actually not going to be live. We're filming this a little bit earlier in the day. Um, but I will be in the comments section below or to the side uh, answering all your questions. So if there's anything that I touch on here in the presentation, feel free to fire me off a question. I will answer it right away. Um, yeah, and just, uh, I can be a little bit more elaborate uh, in terms of explaining things if you guys need it. Um, so another thing I want to start, out with, uh, start off with is a big shout out to Matt Durant. He is the man behind the camera. He is the one who makes all of this work. Um, so thank you, Matt, for, uh, for having me back. Uh, Matt and I did one of our first live casts back, uh, I think about April or May this year, uh, with uh, my pedals, uh, uh, Guitar Effects Pedals 101 video, so it's great to be working with Matt again. Also, Matt went through the trouble of decorating our studio, like top to bottom, so in the comments, be sure to comment on his lovely decorating skills. I'm sure he'd appreciate that. Um, so. Let's, uh, let's start off with the, I guess, the easiest um, gift on our list, which is uh, a gift card. Long & McQuaid offers gift cards in any denomination you want. Now, you can either get ones that are sort of fixed at, you know, sort of $25, $50, $100, anything like that. You can also get one of these cards, um, which is, you know, blank. There's no fixed value, and we can put any amount on there. Um, for people that want sort of larger or smaller than the fixed amounts, you know, any amount is, is good uh, to put on there. We are also selling these cool little gift tins. Um, so the card will just fit right into that. Right there. And that's a great little stocking stuffer. Or, you know, if you just wanted to wrap it up and, you know, give it a, like a party or put that under the tree as well. Because... Gift cards are notoriously hard to wrap. They so make, They make great uh, pick tins as well. Great pick tins, yes. Thank you for that, Matt. The man behind the camera and the voice, the disembodied voice you hear. Um, great, exactly, great pick tins or great tins for anything, um, any like extra bits that you might need, any spare cables or, you know, just holding like little odds and ends. Um, so very, very useful, even after the fact, even after the recipient has got their gift card. Um, so that's great if you just sort of want a quick and easy solution. If you just want to, you know, I, I really don't know what to get this person. I'm just going to get them whatever. Uh, or get them a gift card and they can get whatever they want. Um, but, you know, putting like a physical present in the stocking or something under the tree um, really makes it all that much more special. So. Again, this is the purpose of these live casts, um, to sort of get into the products themselves, show you what they are, show you why somebody might want them. So today, uh, I'm going to be going through guitar products. That means electric guitars and acoustic guitars. 
So let's start off with our first one, which are, and we're, sorry, we're going to go be going in order of price. So it is going to mix up between uh, electric and acoustic products a little bit. Um, but I've sort of organized everything in terms of like uh, increasing price as we go along. So the sort of least expensive smaller items would make great stocking stuffers, uh, which leads me into this. Guitar picks. Such an easy, simple thing, right? Um, guitar players are notorious for losing their picks. Um, they just sort of grow legs and walk away in the night. This is a really interesting little um, gift pack uh, by a company called Tusk, T-U-S-Q, uh, which is made by GraphTech. These picks are really, really cool because they're made with glass fiber, believe it or not. So it's not just the normal nylon or, or um, you know, plastic that you find normally picks are made of. They're quite a bit brighter, I find, um, which can lend some interesting tonality to a guitar. Now, when you're playing guitar, you know, you're, you're playing with your fingers mostly. Most guitar players use a pick, and the size and the shape of the pick is uh, really important in sort of determining the feel of, you know, what your writer or your, what your strumming hand is doing. And that can affect the way you play and sort of the, the inspiration that you get. So these here are uh, Jazz 3 size. Um, so they're the slightly, you know, super popular, slightly smaller uh, size picks. And uh, I believe they do a full size, you know, normal triangular pick as well. Uh, so one thing I, I like to show customers in the stores, and I'll try to do this with my little clip on mic here. I'm just gonna move these gift cards out of the way. Is something, something that I call the drop test. So I have a couple of picks here that I'm going to show you. So one's just my normal green Tortex Dunlop pick. And the other is one of those GraphTech picks. And I'm going to kind of crouch down to the table. And I want you, hopefully this comes through in the live cast, I want you to listen to the sound of this pick when it's dropped versus the sound of this pick when it's dropped. So here goes the green one. Here goes the, the, the normal Dunlop one. Okay, now here's the other one. So, sorry, it kind of rolled away on me. I'm going to do that once more. So it's quite a bit, quite a bit thinner, quite a bit brighter. It almost sounds like a piece of glass hitting the table. And that's the kind of tonality that you're going to transfer into your strings when you're playing, right? It's going to add a little bit more chime to your playing. Um, I find this especially useful on acoustic guitars um, where you don't have an amp to necessarily adjust the bass, the treble, and all that other stuff. So you're sort of reliant on the, on the, the strings and the pick and the bridge and all the parts that are on the guitar itself. You can't sort of easily supplement it with other things. So this is a great, inexpensive, easy way to change how you're interacting with the guitar, both in terms of feel and in terms of sound. So there's a great stocking stuffer. Next up on the list, we have the Ernie Ball Axis Capo. Uh, this one comes in at about 23 bucks. That's right up here. And it looks like that. And what we're gonna do is just gonna unbox it for you and show you how that works. So that's what the capo looks like. This kind of weird bird head looking thing. And what this does, this is a trigger style capo. And it has two surfaces. It has a curved surface for curved fretboards, which you put on like that. And it also has a straight surface that you put on to classical guitars. And you can flip it around and do it both ways. Um, a lot of questions. Uh, I get are like what exactly a capo is and what it does and why somebody should have one. So I brought my guitar with me. This is my trusty Les Paul that some of you may remember if you watch the uh, Pedals 101 video, which you should do after you watch this. 
Um, so basically the capo clips onto the neck of the guitar and raises the overall pitch of the guitar. So what I mean by that, like if I played a C chord down here, sorry, I should say this guitar is down in E flat. So this is actually a B chord, I guess. Then if I put the capo on, say for example on fret three, and I do the same chord, Okay, so the, what happens here is that the pitch of all those notes has actually gone up equally. So the, it's almost like you're moving the nut, right? The vibrating length of the string gives it a certain pitch, right? That's like a low E, and now, now it's a G. Right? But the thing is you're doing that across all the strings all at once. You're pressing them all down on the third fret. So now everything, every note, uh, every accessible note has gone up basically three half steps. And now you get... Right? So you can use all the same shapes that you normally play um, open chords and things like that. Um, you can use all that and that's fine. You don't have to think of other voicings or other positions for that chord. Just use what you already got with the capo and pretend that the capo is your nut. Pretend like this part of the guitar doesn't even exist anymore. You're just playing from here. Or if you want to go even higher, go up here. Right? And the higher up you put the capo, the higher up the pitch, the overall pitch of your guitar goes. Now this is a great songwriting tool. Right? If you're sort of stuck playing the same chords over and over again in the same sequence, I mean that's fine, that's you know, how Western music is. But then, you know, try a capo. Right? Try putting a capo on a random fret, doing those same, that same chord progression and see what comes out. That might inspire you, right? The same progression in a different pitch can inspire you to go in different directions or maybe change the progression a bit. Or if you're a singer-songwriter, um, you know, change the pitch. You can raise the pitch to sort of fit in with your own voice better so you're not struggling to sing lower than, in a lower key than you would normally comfortable with. So capos are super, super uh, I would say essential to, uh, to any guitar player's sort of accessory arsenal in that, um, you know, it can just help you out in so many different ways. And if you know uh, a guitar player who doesn't have a capo already, this is, this I think is the one to buy. Like I said, it has a uh, sort of a curved surface on one side and a straight surface on the other. So classical guitars have flat fretboards. There's no curvature to them at all. So typically what you'd need is a flat style capo to go on there. With this, it's already there. You don't need to buy a separate capo. This will do steel string and classical as well. So that's a great buy right there. All right, next item up on our list is some straps, guitar straps. These ones are from Ernie Ball. They're the Jacquard straps, and they are right over here. And I'll just lay them out on the table so you all can see them. These come in about, about $30 a piece. So you can see we got some cool uh, sort of vintage 60s type patterns there. Here we have one that's um, kind of simpler but also a little bit more elaborate at the same time. Kind of woven, it almost looks like woven shoelaces or something. It's really cool, kind of that bumblebee kind of black and yellow look. Um, the great thing about these straps is that they are adjustable for all sizes of player. Now if you have somebody who's really, really tiny, that's about as short as they get which is, if I were to put it on, is ridiculously short. But it can also extend out 
you know, quite a bit, quite a bit longer, right? So you can have your guitar, you know, wherever you find comfortable. And they're really easy to adjust, almost like backpack straps. So with straps, I think a lot of people get nervous about these that, oh, what if I pick the wrong one? What if they don't like it? What, you know, I, how do I know which one to choose? To be honest, it's, it's not that big a deal. I mean, some of these, uh, especially these, um, the sort of 60s, um, you know, kind of patterns, these are classics, right? These are very similar to what Hendrix and Eric Clapton and Dwayne Allman and all those guys used back in the day. They always look good with electric guitar, right? I would say most of us play either, you know, Fender Stratocaster, Fender Telecaster, or like a Gibson Les Paul or an SG or something. Um, you know, this always, always, always looks good on any of those guitars. Something like this, it could be modern, it could be vintage, uh, depending on what you, you know, depending what you're, what you're going for. Um, it's a great way to personalize your guitar. It's a great way to sort of show your individuality because, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, a guitar is a guitar, right? A Strat is a Strat and a Les Paul is a Les Paul. So you as the player are what differentiates that guitar and this helps you, you know, this is as important as the clothes that you wear on stage when you're performing, right? And that's the other point I want to make is that music and musicians is as much about the look as it is about the sound and about the songs themselves, right? Every musician wants to look good, right? And, and, and I don't care what anyone says, especially guitar players, we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty vain, we, we're pretty like, you know, particular about the way we look and, you know, that's why we, you know, grow out our hair and, you know, uh, you, you know, go for like certain looks or whatever. This will sort of help us get there, right? Um, you know, something like my strap, it's just kind of like got that sort of little bit of a Texas kind of thing going on. Um, this has definitely got the 60s vibe. You can go for whatever kind of vibe you want. It doesn't have to be these particular straps. Uh, all of our Long & McQuaid's locations carry a huge number of straps, all different sizes, colors, patterns. Um, these ones just happen to be uh, on sale and in the gift guide, that's why I featured them. But yeah, I mean, don't worry about getting somebody the wrong strap. There is no wrong strap. Um, the other thing too is it's cool to have a collection of them so that if you're playing like, you know, a country gig, you can wear something a little bit more sort of country looking, you know, with your, but, you know, button down shirt and your Stetson or, you know, if you're doing like a heavy metal kind of gig, you can pick a, a strap to go with that and you're like, you know, black attire or whatever. It, um, it doesn't hurt to have a collection of them. So straps are always, always, always a winning, um, a winning gift idea. All right, next on the list is something a little bit more utilitarian. Uh, this is the Oasis Hygrometer, or Hydrometer, you can say it either way. And that's this little guy right here. So I'll just unbox this so you guys can see it. Now it comes with all sorts of mounting hardware, little Velcro pieces, uh, which I'll get into in a second. There's a little user manual. All right, so this is how it looks. So basically you get two readouts here. You get the uh, thermometer readout, so how hot it is. Um, and then also the uh, humidity level, right? So the idea is that you would put this uh, somewhere in your room uh, or in the case of your guitar, if they have a hard case. And it would tell you how much humidity is around your guitars. Now guitars, especially acoustics, need between 40 and 50 percent uh, ambient humidity uh, or else they can start to develop problems. They can, the necks can warp, uh, bodies can develop like cracks in them which is just not anything anybody should have to deal with. So what this does is it gives you that information. Right now it's reading it's pretty dry in here. Like it's 37 degrees, 37 percent humidity which is too low. So my poor guitar is going to need a little bit of attention when I get it home tonight. But, um, but it's cool. It's just for the video. So what this 
And also what it'll do is it'll tell you the temperature as well. Now temperature has a bit to do with it as well. Um, if it, you don't want to put your guitar anywhere where it's too hot or too cold because then it's going to start um, you know, going out of whack as well. The neck's going to start to move and your action's going to start to adjust. So think of a hygrometer as insurance for your guitar. You're wanting to ensure that uh, you're not developing any sort of problems with either the playability or the neck or any cracks in the body or any sort of funny business. You want to make sure that it's being stored at a decent temperature, something that you'd feel comfortable with yourself, and at um, you know proper humidity, like I said, between 40 and 50 percent. If it's too high or too low, this will tell you, you don't have to guess. Uh, so this guy comes in at about 35 bucks. That's $35 worth of insurance. It's not, not a lot to pay. So that's very, very useful little gadget. All right, next up on the list is the GrooveTech Stagehand Kit at 40 bucks. And that's this guy right here. Stagehand Tech Kit. This is a really, really cool product. Um, I got to preface this by saying I am a huge uh, proponent of DIY uh, guitar repair. I do all my own repair work. I even worked as a repair tech for a while. Um, I really believe that it's important for, for guitar players to know how to service their instruments. Um, it's not a must, but I feel like it gives the player the confidence to fix any problems that come up during the ownership of their instrument, um, as opposed to being fearful of what their instrument's doing or why it's doing that. Um, being able to assess and to, and to solve your, your own problems just gives you an enormous amount of confidence, um, much like having your own car. Right? You don't necessarily have to know how the car works and why it does what it does. You just have to know how to fix it. If you have a flat tire, you got to know how to take the old one off and put the spare tire on. It's incredibly empowering. So, what's in the box, you ask? Let's find out. There's a cool little little tote bag. Okay, this is this is really cool right here. So, you have you have a whole bunch of things. You have number 1 wire cutters. This is so so important. When you are changing strings, you want to be able to snip off the ends at the headstock where the tuners are, otherwise you're going to put somebody's eye out and that's no fun. These are crucial. Every guitar player, I don't care who you are, should have wire cutters and they're there in the kit. Uh, let's see what else you got. Some socket wrenches for tightening up um, like output jacks or the washers around the, uh, the pots, like the volume and the tone pots. Uh, you've got a couple of uh, Allen key, like hex key uh, kind of bits there. Good for doing uh, any truss rod work. And then some other small screwdrivers for just small hex nuts. You got some Phillips stuff to, uh, you know, take pick guards on and off, some flat heads. And then you fit them into, into that. String winder. It still amazes me how many guitar players uh, don't have a string winder. That's a must. As much as the guitar is a must, this is a must for replacing your own strings. Um, that is a super cool one. Actually, this has that little notch uh, in it. I don't know if you can see that. I'll point it to the other camera here. See this little notch right here? This is for pulling up the pins on an acoustic guitar. So if you, you know, say this was the pin and uh, in the bridge and you need to pull it up to get the string out, that's what that's for, getting underneath and just giving you that leverage to pull it out. Yeah, it's a good solid piece. Next up is a ruler with all sorts of measurements on it. 
This is very useful for number one, checking uh, if your frets are level all up and down the fretboard. You can also check string height, pickup height. Um, you can check the string spread if you're cutting a new nut. Very useful. There's a kind of old style trigger capo. Um, I guess for just, you know, if you need to keep the strings on while you're doing work on the guitar, like uh, for example, if you're popping the neck off your fender and you don't want to, the strings to sort of spring out and go everywhere, if you want to keep the springs after you're done, you can just sort of lasso them to the, you know, just put that on the first fret, just lasso them to the guitar, pop the neck, do whatever you need to do, put it back on, tune it up, and there you go, you've kept your strings. So having a spare capo is never a bad thing. The last thing here is, are these. So anybody who knows cars knows what these are. These are feeler gauges for spark plugs. Uh, I got turned on to these years and years and years ago um, from a book by a man called, uh, by the name of uh, Dan Earlwine. And he suggests getting a set of feeler gauges. These basically have measurements in the, you know, tenths and, and hundreds of an inch. And these are for measuring in really, really tight spots. Things like the height of the nut relative to the first fret to make sure that your strings aren't buzzing there. So that's great for like advanced tech work if you're, uh, you know, cutting nuts or uh, anything like that. Um, very, very useful to have that rather than trying to squint at, you know, a ruler like this, which really doesn't go down to as fine measurements as that. Um, now don't feel like you have to, you know, necessarily get into all this, you know, sort of heavy tech work. Um, if, if you get a, a tool set like this, you can sort of learn things as you go. Or a great way to do it is maybe, you know, buy a, like an inexpensive um, guitar and practice on it. Uh, rather than practicing on your main, you know, your main gigging guitar or what have you. Um, Practice on something that, you know, you can afford to, you know, screw it up a little bit because that's how you're going to learn, right, is by doing and getting your hands dirty. And this Groove Tech toolkit will definitely help you with that. Okay. Next is a set of three uh, kind of pedals, guitar pedals, but not quite. Um, I'll explain in a second. These are the ART uh, utility boxes, and they are these three right here. So we have the ART L switch. We have the the patch, uh, patch in it's called. And then we have the loop switch. So what do these things do? They can do a bunch of different things uh, depending on which one you get. Uh, so for somebody who's just buying these as a gift, um, you know, any or all of these can be super, super useful no matter what the guitar player has going on. Um, now, if you were a guitarist yourself, let me just sort of quickly get into some of the things that you can do with these uh, so that you can put them on your own list. Uh, let's take the ART-L switch for a second. This is a basically a latching foot switch. Latching meaning you click it to turn it on, you click it to turn it off. Uh, it has an LED that will light up and show you the status of what's going on. So, what do you do with this? It's a foot switch. It's an amp foot switch. You can change channels. You can turn uh, like onboard reverb on and off, uh, onboard effects. Um, that's a great way to sort of toggle, toggle your amp uh, between two different states, right? So if you've lost your foot switch, if you keep losing your foot switch, if you want uh, an inexpensive um, sort of backup for that kind of thing, uh, that's a great choice. I should say these are all uh, around the $60 mark uh, for all of these products. Next one up is the patch in. So take a look at this, this is really interesting. It has an in and an out, a send and a return, okay? 
There's a couple of things that you can do with this that are really interesting. You can put this on a pedal board as a patch bay. What does that mean? Check this out. If Let's pretend this is my pedal board, okay? This little uh, packaging from the stagehand uh, toolkit. So I got all my pedals here. I come in on one side and I go out on the other side, right? Because that's how pedal boards are. Well, what if you don't want to go in on one side and out on the other? What if you want to just go in and out on the same side and just keep all your cables together? Well, look, check it out. You put this on the side of the, your pedal board that you want. You go from your guitar into that and out to your amp. You go from the send here into your first pedal, goes through your pedal board, out from your last pedal into the return. So essentially what it's doing is guitar in, send through your pedals, return from your pedals, and out to your amp. So it keeps all your connections on one side of your board so you don't have to worry about all these cables tripping you up. The other thing that it can do is it can split your signal. Uh, you can go in uh, with your source, your guitar or whatever else. You can go out, but then you can also do a send out, right? So basically what that's doing is it's taking your input signal and splitting it two ways. So it's almost like an AB box that you don't really have the option to choose one or the other. It's always both at the same time. This is super cool for recording. If you are, uh, especially if you're recording bass, I think. Um, so if you're going into this with your bass guitar, you go out directly to your interface as, as like a DI signal. Then you can go send out to your pedals or your amps or whatever and you know, maybe mic up the amp. And that way you're getting both signals into your uh, recording software at once. So super, super cool that one. I like that. And then we have the last one, the loop switch. This is what, it's almost an AB box, but not quite. This is intended to be guitar in, amplifier out. Right, out to the amplifier, I should say. Then you have another send and return here, but you also have a foot switch. So what this allows you to do is guitar in, uh, out to the amp, which is just directly connected, jack to jack. When you click the foot switch on, what this will do is it'll send your, your incoming signal out to maybe a loop of pedals or something like that, um, or to another signal path altogether, back into the return, and then send the return signal out. So if you have a chain of pedals, right, or something that you want to be doing but not all the time, you can switch from directly through to the amp to in that basically that loop, that almost effects loop, and then switch it back out again. So that's super, super cool. The other thing you can do is you can treat it like an AB box. So you can go in, connect send almost as your A, and the out as your B. So basically what that means is you're going in with the guitar signal and you're choosing path A or you're choosing path B and you can toggle that with the foot switch. Uh, so that lets you choose between two different amps or two different, um, two different signal paths. I would say out of the three this is probably going to be the most flexible in terms of the amount of stuff that you can do with it. Um, so if you're stuck between the three, in my opinion, I would, I would probably pick the loop switch. Move those up here. Cool. So the next one, now this is not in the uh, gift guide, I should say, but this is always something that I know I sell a ton of around the holidays, and it's the Vox Amplug series. Uh, now this is series two for the Amplugs, and they are right behind me over here. And I'll lay them out for you on the table so we can get a look at what these are. So these are headphone amps. There's no speaker. You have to have a set of wired headphones. They're not Bluetooth or anything. You gotta have the old style you know, connected with a little, you know, mini jack. 
And basically what it does is you connect it directly into your guitar with the plug, plug in your headphones, and it's an analog amp simulator with digital effects built in, if you can believe that. These are unbearably cool. I have a couple myself. Um, each one is slightly different. Uh, this one here is the, uh, the AC30, which is, you know, Vox's most famous amp. That's the sound of the Beatles and the Stones and the Foo Fighters and, you know, all those guys, Brian May from Queen. Um, that's sort of that classic, you know, British Vox sound. They have a heavy metal version, which is more like a Mesa Boogie kind of rectifier or, or like a VHT or, you know, something like that. Uh, there's also the blues one, which is, uh, I guess, more like a tweed fender. There's a rock uh, amp as well, and there's a bass version as well, which I think is probably one of the coolest ones. Um, but I don't have that here today. Um, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to demo the, uh, the AC30 for you and show you just how cool this thing is, because people don't believe that this thing sounds as good as it does. So I'm just going to grab my guitar again. go and just unbox that these things run on batteries and you'll be relieved to know that the batteries are included in the box triple A's if you're curious so look check it out there this has a pivoting arm with a quarter inch jack on it okay what we're gonna do is we're going to go into straight into the output jack of the guitar, just like that. And you can sort of pivot that any way you want. Uh, it will fit in Fender style guitars if you keep it straight. Uh, I know a lot of people ask about, you know, what about my Stratocaster with the jack on the front? Just make it go straight, boom, that's it. So on my Les Paul, I'm just gonna keep it tilted like that. And get my headphones here. Now these are, these are Apex headphones, uh, the HP DJ1 headphones. Uh, I don't know if Andre is going to be covering this in the uh, recording uh, live cast that's going to be coming up uh, probably in December. Uh, I think his one is, but uh, yeah, it's a nice set of headphones as well. There. Okay. That's pretty good, right? For this tiny, tiny little box. It's so good. And, uh, oh, one thing I got to show you is the digital effects. These are super cool. Um, I'm going to go for a little bit gentler sound on this one. Check this out. This is the modulation. Now, you don't get to choose sort of the, um, the depth or the rate uh, of any of these, you know, special effects that you can put on there. It's just sort of preset, but I mean, it's a headphone amp, you know, you can't really complain. Check this out. This one, I think, is delay. <laughs> Cool, and the last one, I believe, is Reverb. So 
so good for a headphone amp. If you are in a situation where you can't play loud, um, you know, you can't have, you know, you can't be disturbing other people, maybe you're in a small condo or a small house, um, or maybe you just like to play late at night or, you know, sometime when people in your house are, you know, sleeping or can't be disturbed, this is so, so useful. It's totally analog um, for those purists out there. Um, the effects are digital, um, but you can totally bypass them if you don't want them. Um, the nice thing about the bass version is that it also has a drum machine built in, which is just like, just blows my mind. And it has tap tempo, so you can set it as fast or as slow as you need it to be and practice your chops. So definitely, definitely check these out. These are like one of the ultimate sort of, um, you know, stocking stuffer ideas. Uh, definitely high up there on my list. That's why I thought they should be included in this video. These go for about 65 bucks a piece. All right, now we're starting starting to get away from the sort of like little accessories and get more into the instruments themselves. Now I tried to pick instruments that were, you know, within within a, a reasonable price reasonable price range. We don't want to get too crazy with like thousand dollar instruments or anything like that. Um, we're going to talk about a ukulele because this is also something that we sell a ton of around Christmas time. There we go. This is the Fender Venice Soprano Ukulele. Comes in about a hundred bucks. Um, Fender's really been killing it with their ukuleles. Um, I don't know what they're doing differently at their factory or what have you, but all the ukuleles I've seen from them have been really, really, really good. Um, this one has, you know, kind of the typical Fender styling. You get a little bit of the Telecaster headstock. You get the binding, which is nice, especially on a, you know, dark instrument like that. Just helps things pop. Um, very, very simple. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say about a ukulele except that it's fun, it's portable. It's also kind of a fun songwriting tool. Um, the chord shapes are related to guitar, but they're kind of different. The tuning is, is much, much higher. So to sort of noodle around on the ukulele gets you thinking about the notes very differently. Um, I'll try to play something. I'm not the best uke player, so, but just to give you a sense of how it sounds. Oop, a little out of tune. Told you I wasn't the best uke player, but you get the idea. Um, you know, everybody knows what these are these days. Um, this is the soprano size, so this is the smallest size that you can get. So I find that they're good for um, parents or relatives shopping for very young kids who maybe want a guitar, uh, but who can't necessarily hold a guitar yet. They're very, very small. This is a great way to get them used to fretting strings on a fretboard. Ukuleles are nylon string, so they're very easy to press. Um, the fretboard is in, incredibly tiny for somebody with big sausage fingers like me. Um, it's a little tricky to get around, um, but for somebody with small hands, this is just a dream. You can do all sorts of, you know, stretches and chord shapes and whatever you need to. The frets are like probably one finger width apart for somebody like me. Um, yeah, great, great gift, not just for not just for kids, but for somebody who wants just a light, portable, easy instrument. They can just sort of kick back on the couch and just be, you know, plinking away. That's a good choice. All right. 
we're going to go back a little bit. We're going to talk some more about some DIY options for now electric guitar specifically. So what I've got here is the Seymour Duncan uh, pickup. And this specifically is the 59 model uh, for the neck. Now, guitar pickups are a great uh, entryway into uh, electric guitar DIY. It's the most obvious upgrade you can give your guitar. Not in terms of look, because they all kind of look the same, but in terms of sound. Nothing affects the sound of your guitar more than number one, your technique, but number two, the pickups. So if you have an inexpensive guitar that you're wanting to upgrade, or you know somebody who, who has just kind of been like, you know, not as thrilled with their guitar, you know, maybe they're looking for something else, try that. Try upgrading the pickups and see if that improves the voice of the instrument to the point where um, you like it. Uh, I'm going to unbox that just so you see, you guys see exactly what I'm talking about here. So there it is, all nice and shiny. So not a whole lot going on in the box. Uh, there's some uh, mounting hardware, those are the screws and the springs. And this is the pickup itself. Okay, kind of looks, uh, you know, for somebody that doesn't know what it is, you'd be kind of be scratching your head going, well, what, what, what the heck is that? Um, I'll show you what it is. It's this on, uh, on a guitar, specifically on a Gibson style guitar that has uh, humbuckers, right? That's what this is. Now mine have covers on them, uh, these lovely nickel covers. Um, but basically that's what's going on inside is you've got these two sort of bobbins with co or wire wrapped around them in a coil. Um, and that's what's under there. And that's what senses the output from the strings, and that's what sends the sound down the cable to the amp, and then the amp makes it louder and you know does its thing. Um, this can be a complicated mod, or it can be a very simple mod, depending on your guitar and depending on your skills. Um, pickups do need to be soldered um, to be installed uh, on your guitar. It just basically comes with this little um, you know, this little bit of bare wire here. So uh, it does need, you know, some, some, some expertise to install that. But I'll tell you what, I got started uh, in soldering. Um, I just bought a cheap soldering iron from, I don't know, some electronics shop here in Toronto uh, and learned how to do it myself. I practiced on just like little random bits of metal that I had, got some solder, practiced my solder joints. Bought, I had already bought a set of pickups and, you know, just decided I want to do it myself. I want to see what this is like. And, um, and yeah, and I've done all my own solder work ever since. So it's a great sort of entryway into that. Again, the more hands-on you are with your own instrument, the more confident you're going to be about fixing any potential problems that, you know, may come up in the future. Um, now, if this is absolutely not something that, you know, you see yourself doing or you see the recipient of the gift, you know, you don't see them doing this, you don't see them getting their hands dirty, that's totally cool. Long & McQuaid's got all sorts of great repair technicians that can do this kind of work, no problem. Um, so, if you're looking for some, a gift for somebody who's handy, who's kind of like, you know, itching to get under the hood of their guitar, um, Think about a set of pickups. It doesn't have to be this one. Now, Seymour Duncan is not the only company that uh, that makes pickups. Um, there's DiMarzio. I mean, you know, one of my favorites is DiMarzio. I got DiMarzios in my Les Paul right there. Um, Seymour Duncan's been around forever. They're probably one of the better known companies. Uh, Gibson, Fender, each make their own pickups um, that are equally good. It's just a matter of taste. Um, as a gift. I mean, if somebody has a Fender, you can always buy Fender pickups. If somebody has a Gibson, you can buy them Gibson pickups. That way, that sort of takes the guesswork out of it. You can really can't go wrong with those branded pickups because they're designed for those kind of guitars. So, there you go. Electric guitar pickups. Think about it. All right. Here, I'm going to pull a bit of a cheeky trick. Uh, we're going to cover two different items at two different price points. Okay, we're going to talk about guitar tuners, and I'm not talking about the, the little machine heads to tune them up. I'm talking about the things that read 
the, the tuning of your note and keep you in tune. So over here we have the Snark tuner. This is the SN8, uh, which is my favorite Snark. And then we have the Boss TU3, uh, which is this guy here. And I'll put that on the overhead as well. Um, both do the same thing. Both are very, very different. So let's get some unboxing done. Let's do the Snark first. I'm sure everybody knows Snark by now, but if you don't, it's a type of tuner that we refer to as a clip-on tuner. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. Just comes out of the bag, and it's this funny looking thing right here. It's got like this little mouth on it that will help it clip onto things like that. It's got a little, it's got a, actually quite a big screen I should say and the power button right underneath it. So when it's on that little light is on and then when it's off nothing's there. So again I'm going to reach for my Les Paul. I'm going to show you how to use a clip-on tuner and get my guitar back in tune as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to clip it onto the headstock, just like that, right? It's got little rubber feet. It's not going to ruin your finish or anything like that. Now I'm going to show you the screen. Okay, now I'm just going to play one note at a time. There. So my note is D sharp on my high string, which is what it's supposed to be because I'm, uh, I'm a half step down. And you basically go through one string at a time. Ah, there it is. I knew something was off. There we go, G sharp. One string at a time, and it will read the vibration of the string through the headstock of the guitar and tell you what note it is that that open string is. There we go. And then when you're done with it, you just click it off and remove it. That's it. Super, super easy. This is one of those things, I think this is an absolute must. If you play guitar, this, this should be mandatory. Like, they, they should be, like, you know, Gibson, Fender, everybody should be putting these in cases. Like, you have to have a guitar tuner. An out-of-tune guitar is one of the worst sounding things in the world. Uh, any out-of-tune instrument, really, is one of the worst sounding things in the world. It's not pleasing to the ear. Your brain starts to fight with it. It just, it just doesn't sound good. So um, you always need a tuner and you always need a backup tuner because these things, again, like picks, just they go missing, right? They, they grow legs and walk away, especially if you're the type to do a lot of gigs, um, you know, and play out a lot. They always go missing. So spare tuners never, ever, ever go amiss. I'm going to show you what the pedal tuner looks like. There we go. And that, there it is. Boss Chromatic TU3 tuner. This thing, uh, not this version, but the Boss Chromatic tuner uh, has been around forever. The previous version was the TU2. I remember having this for like I want to say 15 years and it just wouldn't die. Anything by Boss is bulletproof. You could chuck it out of the back of a moving truck and down the highway and it would still work. Um, absolutely, absolutely bulletproof. What they've changed from the TU3 to the TU2 is a brighter display um, where, I wonder if this is going to work, I wonder if the battery's hooked up. Let's plug it in and see. Yes, okay, it will work. So I'm going to get my guitar back. So that's the other nice thing, in case uh, anybody didn't catch that. The battery comes pre-installed from Boss at the factory, which is very good. So, kick it on, right, with the foot switch as you would any other pedal. Oops, and your volume has to be up. And there you go. So that's how it's going to display. Very, very similar, almost identical to the Snark, but just it's going to be on the floor on your pedal board. I would say anybody who has any pedals uh, or any sort of pedal board at all, you, you absolutely should have one of these on your board if you don't already. Um, 
tuning during a gig, like, you know, in the heat of the moment, it's hot on stage with all of the, the heat of the lights, your guitar is going to start moving around. And it's going to be, you know, you're going to be rocking out and things are going to go out of tune. In between songs, just kick on your tuner, tune up real quick, boom, turn it off and you're ready for the next one. And it's literally just that simple. You just kick it on, kick it off, that's it. It can also be powered by 9 volt uh, power adapter. The neat thing about the TU3 is that it can actually spit power out. So basically what it's doing is it's just sharing the, uh, the 9 volt adapter input with a couple of more pedals. Uh, you can't go too crazy. I think it's only, what is it, 200 milliamps out? Or 300 milliamps out, whatever it is. So I wouldn't necessarily go wild and pedal your entire, uh, sorry, power your entire pedal board, but you can definitely get some extra pedals on there with just one adapter. So that covers tuners, an absolute, absolute must, I think, for any guitar player. I should mention the price point as well. This guy here comes in at $130, and the Snark is super inexpensive at $23. Either one can fit in it. Well, yeah, that'll fit in a stocking. This, you could probably wrap that and put that under the tree. All right, so now we're sort of above that $100 mark, and we're going to get into another instrument here, which is the... Denver. This is the DTR-34S. And it's a surprisingly good guitar considering what you're paying for it. This would be ideal for um, a younger kid who maybe is too big for a ukulele or uh, somebody who um, has, uh, you know, mobility problems with their hands, they can't stretch quite as much as they would like. This is a three-quarter size guitar, which means it's three-quarters the size of a normal guitar. So the body is smaller, the frets are closer together because the neck is shorter, um, you don't have to stretch as much to, uh, to get at your chords. Um, so really easy for kids to get their arms around and play. Um, uh, and like I said, especially good for, for people who, you know, can't stretch their, their fingers, right? You can just... And, and it sounds like actually pretty good. For a guitar that's well under 200 bucks, this thing has no business being as good as it is, I think. Uh, mahogany all the way around, it looks like, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, really, really impressive. I would recommend this, like I said, to anybody who, um, kids who are, again, I hate to bring age into it, but maybe over five years old, um, ones that are, you know, who are adamant that they don't want a ukulele, um, or, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard because sometimes kids are like, yes, I really, really, really want a guitar. No, I really, really, really don't want anything else. I got to have one of these. Um, you know what? Just get them a three-quarter size guitar. That's the way you're going to keep them interested. If they, kids are kind of like that. Some kids are kind of like that. If they don't get the thing that they are, have envisioned in their head, they're just not going to do it. Um, I know I was certainly like that. So, um, you know, three-quarter size guitar, especially one as, as, uh, with as much value for the money as this. Like, this is just like, I, truthfully, I've never seen this guitar before today before right now. Um, I usually work in electric guitars. So this is kind of something of a revelation. This is really, really cool. I would absolutely buy one of these as just like a beater guitar, take it up to the cottage. Um, it's super compact, you know, you don't need a necessarily full-size guitar if you're just, you know, kicking back in a, in a chair and just sort of strumming. Um, it's a great living room guitar. Looks good, you can just sort of leave it out. Um, it's a laminate top, so it's a little bit more durable than, uh, than a solid top guitar would be. Um, and it does uh, come with a case. I almost forgot that. Um, comes with the soft bag, um, so you don't necessarily have to buy an extra one. You can buy a higher quality one if you want. 
Um, but that'll, you know, out the door, that is a terrific deal at 170 bucks. This is really, really cool. All right. Here's another cool one for electric players, which I guess can also be used for uh, acoustic, is the X5 Audio U2 wireless system. This is a really cool, simple, inexpensive way to get into wireless systems for guitar. Uh, let's open it up and see what we got going on. Okay, all sorts of manuals and a warranty card, that's cool. Okay, here we go. So you got two, two pieces and a cable. You have uh, a transmitter, so this is the part that is going to plug into your guitar or your bass or your acoustic guitar or whatever. This is what's going to transmit the sound to here, the receiver. This is going to be plugged into your amp or whatever your source is going to be. Um, now they both kind of look exactly the same, um, which might be a little confusing except for the fact that it says right on top which is which, so just go by that. The cable here, uh, this is a USB uh, charger, so you can, uh, now it doesn't come with the charger itself, it comes with the cable, uh, which I think is a smart move. I think we all have enough USB chargers these days with your iPhone, or your iPad, or your Android phone, or you know, whatever else. So it's USB type A on one end and then the micro USB on the other. And it splits, so it's almost like a Y cable. So one USB coming from your charger and then it splits one into here, one into here, so you can charge them both at the same time, um, which is very useful. But also, if you end up losing this cable, you don't have to freak out. It's just a generic um, USB micro plug and you can just charge them one at a time. So no big deal. Uh, let's demo how these work. Right. It's hard seeing a lot of action today. Looks easier than it is. This thing's terribly heavy. All right. This is the transmitter. We're going to turn it on. You're going to see that there's a bunch of lights that come on right there. So again, just going the output jack right there. Boom. That's it. It'll just fold up in a way. Don't touch it. There's a receiver again. Lights are coming on. The blue light, I think, means it's pairing, or that it has, uh, or that it has paired. And let's plug that into here. And now. was all without wires. There's nothing connecting me to that amp over there. It's all wireless. Super cool, super flexible. A lot of those, uh, you know, big arena acts, uh, you know, guys like Iron Maiden, Metallica, Slayer, you know, not just the metal bands, but any of those bands that are on big stages, they all tend to have, you know, some version of this so that they can run around and not be tied to one spot, not be tied to, you know, however long their cable is. Um, this is super cool, even if you're, you know, just hanging out at home, right? You just sort of want to walk around and play a little bit. Um. Not have to worry about, you know, snagging this, snagging that. If, you know, the doorbell rings, if, you know, your uh, Long and McQuaid delivery arrives, you can, you, know, you can sort of peek and see who's there and not worry about, you know, are you pulling your amp off the... Uh, you know, off the table or anything like that. Very, very cool, very useful, and very inexpensive for a wireless unit. These go for about $210 for the set. Um, 
Yeah, it's a great way. Now, obviously, there are better, more elaborate wireless systems out there from the likes of Sennheiser and Shure. You can get into that. Um, I, I would save that for, for like professional, like touring stuff. You don't necessarily need anything that high tech. This is um, interference free as far as I'm concerned. Um, like super, super flexible. We, we use it in the store. We demo it in the store all the time. Um, you know, people walk to the back of the store all the way to the front, still playing. You know, there's, n there's never any interference or anything like that. So there's a, there's a great choice. All right. Next up, we have a Fender amp. I'm just going to clear these two guys out of here. And there it is. This is the Fender Mustang LT25. This also comes in at only 209 bucks. This is what you heard when I was just rocking out there. This is what I plugged the wireless unit into, the receiver. This amp is replacing the Fender Mustang 1V2, uh, which was super, super popular for uh, a number of years. Uh, this is a digital modeling amp, uh, which is to say it has emulations of a whole bunch of different amplifiers and effects uh, built into it. So you don't necessarily need anything else. You don't need uh, effects pedals or um, you know, anything else to change your sound. Everything is all on board. Um, it's easy to reconfigure it um, to get different sounds. Um, let's, uh, let's check out a couple of sounds here. So that was the kind of like, you know, rocking kind of blues thing. Let's do a, like a Fender clean here. Squeaky clean right there. Let's do uh, let's do something interesting here. sounds are available basically at the turn of a dial. I didn't even adjust anything. These are just the presets and they sound really good. Um, you know, for an amp that costs like, you know, just over 200 bucks, that's, that's pretty all right. Uh, on the last one you heard uh, a little bit of tremolo. That's that sort of, you know, kind of like the sounds kind of coming in and out. <laughs> Right, that kind of thing. There are other effects built into it. This thing's just got so many presets, you could just go forever and ever and ever. Um, you know, there's rock, there's thrash metal, there's like classic vintage amps, uh, there's like, you know, um, like kind of funky sounds with an auto wah, kind of, um, you know, Bootsy Collins kind of things going on. Um, there's all sorts of stuff in there. And you don't even need to necessarily go into you know and, and edit all these parameters you just sort of pick your favorite one and get rocking right um it's uh, it's got an interesting set of connectivity it has um basically a headphone output um so you can you know practice uh without bothering anybody it has an aux in uh which i believe bypasses the entire preamp what that lets you do is it lets you plug in your phone or uh, any other music source, like an iPod, if anybody still uses those, I don't know. Um, and basically jam along, right? This thing doesn't have Bluetooth or anything like that. Um, so you'd have to, you know, hardwire in with like a, an eighth inch cable and, you know, just practice or just jam along with your favorite artists. 
The other interesting thing here is it's got a USB port. Um, again, with the same kind of connector, the micro USB that we saw before on the charging cable for the X5. So if you got one of those kicking around, you can hook this thing up directly to your computer and record with it as your interface. You don't even need anything else. You just plug into here, you select the sound you want, you go into whatever recording software you have, if it's GarageBand or Logic or Pro Tools or Reaper or whatever you got, and just record in. That's it. You don't need anything else. This is a great way to get started as a, you know, do everything kind of amp. Um, it will, you know, it's good for beginners, but it's also good for people who, you know, just need something simple and a simple utilitarian, you know, kind of amp that's just going to do a little bit of everything. Um, at 200 bucks, that is, uh, it's kind of a steal. Uh, at my, in my opinion. The, the Mustang 1 V2 that preceded this was an absolute no-brainer and this just kind of puts it in uh, a little bit of an easier to read package. There's, a, there's an LCD screen, I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, yeah, I'll tilt it. There we go. There it is. Let me get that bow off. So there you can scroll your presets. Uh, you can dip into the presets and edit like certain things. You can edit the amp and all the effects. Uh, and then there's a back button there, and there's also a save button. You can do tap tempo for the delay. Um, if you're looking for a first amp, or like I said, just a great, I don't want to have to think about this, I want this thing to do what it says on the box, that's your amp right there. All right, let's move this guy back. And we're going to look at another amp. This also was not in the gear guide, I don't think, but this needs, this needs to be seen. This is unbearably cool. This is the Hughes and Kettner, wrong way, Hughes and Kettner Spirit of Vintage amplifier. Um, it is a tiny, 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 tiny little solid state amp. Um, and it sounds amazing. And it's 50 watts of power, which is just like, it's unbelievable how much power they're packing into amplifiers these days. Um, let's get into it. Let's just open up the box. Here we go. There's the manual. Ah, here it is. All right. Let's get rid of this. Okay, check this thing out. Look at how small that is. It is absolutely tiny relative to my hand, right? This is my hand, this is my watch. This is how small this thing is. It is unbelievably tiny. Um, 50 watts out of this thing. And I've tried it in the store. It does, it is loud. It can get really, really loud really, really quickly. Um, so basically what you have here is a simplified layout. You have gain, uh, which is how much distortion you want or don't want. You have a tone control, so that sets how bright or how uh, dark something is. Uh, you have your master volume, which is your output volume. And then you have this interesting sagging control. This is really hard to describe. Um, but it's also really hard to demo it properly. It's definitely more of a feel thing than it is a sound thing. Basically, the gain control is how much preamp gain you, you get. And the sagging control is how much power amp gain you get. So in tube amplifiers, you have the preamp and you have the power amp. Um, Preamp tubes will distort and do their own thing and they sound kind of crispy and tight and crunchy, right? Think of, I mean, think of like a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe or like a, a Blues uh, Junior or something like that, right? That's all preamp gain. Back in the old days, they didn't have like sort of all these master volume and everything like that. They, you basically had to play your amp really, really, really loud for it to distort and once that was happening, the power tubes themselves, the things that were creating your volume, were distorting. And that's a very different sound that's very sort of chewy and mid-rangey. And it's just, 
it just sounds so much bigger than, than preamp distortion, and that's what that knob is going to give you. The sagging control is that sort of big, mid-rangey, kind of, kind of sloppy, kind of chewiness to it, um, which sounds so, so good. So enough of me talking about it. Let's plug it in and see what it sounds like. Let's go in with the wireless again. All right, so y'all can see it lit up that classic Hughes and Kettner blue, which is derived from their Triamp, I believe. Um, that little, that little red thing in there, or kind of orange or pink, however you're seeing it, that's the circuit. That's the preamp circuit itself, uh, which is, I believe, all made in Germany. Um, these are derived from the um, the Black Spirit amps, which are the super, super loud, uh, you know, 200 watt monster um, combos. Uh, they also make a head version. This is intended to be a slimmed down version of that. So they're using the same preamp circuit uh, as the big one. So let's hear what this sounds like. So what you heard there is not the amplifier being mic'd through anything. That was the headphone output going into our mixing board here in the studio. The amp has a, re a, a set of features that I find really interesting for the recording guitar player, uh, which is kind of how we're all doing things these days. A lot of home recording, a lot of home practice. So obviously the headphones are a great um, you know, make it a great practicing amp, the headphone output. Uh, it is um, frequency compensated, which means that Hughes and Kettner is famous for a product called the Red Box, which emulated the sound of a mic'd up speaker cabinet. So if you had like a giant 412 and you stuck an SM58 microphone on it and recorded that to a mixing desk, that's what it would sound like. So they've basically built that circuit into the headphone output so that it sounds like it's connected to a 412 cabinet. But what they've also done on the Spirit uh, amps, these little guys, is it has a line out on the back as well without the speaker emulation. Now, why would you want to do that? Because most, uh, or a lot of guitar players, I won't say most, but a lot of guitar players these days uh, are doing cabinet emulation in their computers, right? Uh, either uh, with, um, you know, the one that comes to mind is like the, uh, the two notes audio, like the wall of sound. Um, basically what that lets you do is it sort of captures a snapshot of a particular speaker in a particular cabinet in a particular room. And you can change the microphone placement on the speaker and mix it with other cabinets and really get a nice big sound as if you were miking, you know, all these different cabinets in a studio, uh, all being fed from one amp. Um, so what that lets you do is, is basically take the, um, the sound of this and feed it into your interface and basically let you choose whatever cabinet you want, um, which is super cool. I mean, I, I never really sort of thought about having frequency compensated line out and non-frequency compensated line out like this does. So this makes the Spirit Amp a really, really cool recording tool. Um, this would be great just sitting on your desk. Like it doesn't even have to be connected to a speaker cabinet as long as you have uh, either the line out or the, um, the headphones uh, connected just so it knows, okay, that's where I'm sending the signal. I'm going to shut the speaker output off. So it'd be great for just, you know, sitting on your desk if you want to, you know, add some guitar to your tracks. 
Um, it doesn't even have to be that distorted. Like I was playing it pretty distorted before. I'm going to try to get a cleaner tone out of it. so it, it will do clean as well if he needed to. I think these amps are kind of meant to rock personally but that's just me. Um, now there are a number of different models in this series. I just picked the vintage one that happens to be my favorite. Um, I tend to like you know slightly on, on you know lower gain um, and then if I need to I can uh, you know get into some fuzz pedals or overdrive or whatever. Um, but there are higher gain versions of this. There is the Spirit of Rock and there's the Spirit of Metal. Um, so it sort of goes in that order, vintage, then rock, then metal in terms of how much, uh, how much gain but also the voicing of it. Um, a bunch of us were trying this out in the store the other day and I feel like the amount of gain that's on tap uh, for, this, for these amps is about the same from unit to unit. Uh, for between the rock, the vintage, and the metal. Obviously there's some differences. The metal one just plain old has way, way, way more gain than most sane human beings would ever need. Um, but they kind of all have similar gain ranges, but they're voiced so differently. This is, um, you know, very flat, very even. You, there's a, you know, even number of highs, lows, and mids. The rock one I find is very, uh, very mid-rangey, uh, makes me think of a Marshall. Um, the metal one is very scooped in the mids, makes me think of a, a Mesa Boogie. So, uh, you know, at $300 this is like such a great do-everything kind of amp in the sense of like it's a great practice tool, it's a great recording tool, but also when we, you know, when we all get back to gigging and live music becomes a thing again, it's such a great backup amp. If you're the type to gig with your own amp, um, you know, have one of these on standby in case your amp goes poof in a puff of smoke and just dies in the middle of the gig. You hook this up real quick. 50 watts at 4 ohms. This thing is just like unbelievably cool. I am really stoked about this one. All right, we're kind of coming to the end here. What we got last is this one. This is the Boss RC-10R Rhythm Loop Station. This isn't just a looper, this is also a drum machine. Let's see what this looks like. Here's the manual and the adapter is in there and here it is. Okay, there we go. So what we have here is, it's got two sides to it, and you know what, it might be better if I power this on. There we go. Okay. So there it is, it's booting up. Okay, now what we have is the rhythm section and then the loop section. The loop section gives you two different loops to play back on top, uh, together with each other. You have unlimited overdubs on each. Uh, I don't know exactly what the overall uh, recording time is on this, but it's Boss's latest generation of loopers, so I assume it's something ridiculous. 
in terms of hours and not minutes anymore. Um, either way, it gives you the flexibility of two loops with unlimited overdubs. Here you have the rhythm section. Um, it is a full featured drum machine. It will give you not just a, you know, boom, clack, boom, clack, you know, to, just to keep time. It gives you an intro fill. It gives you um, basically pattern one. It'll give you a pattern two, like sort of like a middle eight or a chorus or something like that. And also give you an ending fill. So this is like a full performance machine. Uh, now I went into uh, choosing this from our gift guide, thinking that this was just a, you know, a two-channel looper, which it is, I wasn't expecting the rhythm section to be so fully featured. Uh, so that was kind of a nice surprise. What you can do here is you can just, you know, you can set the, the BPM, uh, you can set the type of, um, like, of, of rhythm. There's like a rock, eight beat, one, two, and then the, the tempo will go according to whatever preset you're on. Yeah, super cool. Let's hear what that sounds like. So what I'll do is I'll switch the X5 into here. And then we're going to come out of here. into the spirit. Okay, so uh, one thing I should tell you about this is that it has stereo ins and stereo outs. So if you're just using uh, the stereo in, uh, sorry, the mono uh, in and out, then you'll just plug, it even says it right on there, but you're basically plugging into the A uh, input and the A output. That's all that is. find my pick. Okay, here we go. Let's test that for a second. Okay, there we go. So here's, here's something cool that you guys can do with, uh, you know, with your wireless unit is it doesn't have to go from necessarily from the guitar to the amp. It can go from the guitar to your pedal board or from your pedal board over to your amp. So you can sort of put the receiver in a bunch of different spots in your chain depending on what you need. It doesn't have to go from like the absolute start point to the absolute end point. Like I'm doing here, just going into the input of the pedal. Um, so now what we're going to do, uh, we're, I'm going to try to do a loop. It's going to be a little bit janky uh, because I have to go and press it with my hand so it's not necessarily going to start right on time like I'll want it to, but So what it's doing here now, this visual display is really, really cool. So you can hear my loop coming back. So messed up a little bit on the intro, but that's okay. This is basically going to show you where in the loop you are so to give you a visual representation of like, okay, now it's coming back around again. Now you got to start again. And that's basically all a looper does, is it records something that you've played and just loops it back to you over and over and over again, and you can play on top of it. Super cool, great practice tool. If you want to build your own loops uh, of your own rhythm playing and then solo on top of it, it's a great way to figure out 
you know, where you want to land your notes um, when you're soloing. Um, if you, you know, if you're trying to uh, maybe figure out uh, somebody else's solo, right? Like that was, I, I think that was probably a, what I just did there was like a ZZ Top song or something. Um, or covers Easy Top did. Now, if you want to figure out where that guitar player, where Billy Gibbons places his notes in relation to where the rhythm guitar is, looping is a great way to teach you all that kind of stuff. Now, I'm just going to erase that loop. There we go. That loop is gone. Now I'm going to show you the rhythm part of it. Uh, here we go. All right. So there was the intro, um, the intro fill, and these little red indicators here are how many bars there are, right? So this is a this is a four bar loop, and we can just play along. Obviously, you can keep going and going and going, but that's 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 the rhythm function, and you can add fills. Like if you tap the rhythm switch as it's going, it'll add a fill in to like sort of cue the next section. Um, if you hold, press and hold that thing, it will sort of give you a fill and then go into the B section or like a chorus or something. Um, and then if you double tap it, it gives you that ending fill, but boom, 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 and then you're out. This is such a great um, like performance tool. Like if you're um, doing any live casts, performing by yourself, um, if you're busking, um, you know, not so much now because it's kind of winter time, but if you're brave, you want to go out there and busk, this is a great way to have an accompaniment that just sort of beyond the, the normal boring sort of boom, clack, boom, clack of like a drum machine. This is almost a smart drum machine that is doing the fills and making you feel like you're performing with a real drummer. And that in turn is going to make you play, um, you know, differently. You're going to play to the drummer and you're going to sort of nail all those fills and do all that kind of stuff. And it's going to be a better performance and make you a better busker and musician. So this is you know, not the cheapest looper out there. It's about $439. This is definitely, um, you know, towards the higher end of Boss's looping range. Now, they do have um, sort of least, less expensive models like the RC1, the RC5. Um, TC Electronic has the Ditto looper, uh, which is also really cool. That's super popular. Um, but in terms of features for money, I feel like the RC10R is just unbelievably good because they've what they've done is something very smart they've they've melded two different things that solo musicians want is is a looper so they can loop and you know noodle over their own rhythm tracks but they've also given them a drummer to jam with and to add substance to their loops um, unbearably cool little product the other nice thing too I should say for uh, you know for when we do get back into sort of live performance is um, uh, it has MIDI in and out. Um, without getting too technical, MIDI basically will let the looper follow a click track or follow the tempo of say an electronic drum kit or something like that um, so that it's not running on its own internal clock. It's sort of basically being clocked to a different source. And what that lets you do is just sort of you know, uh, it will sort of automatically trigger, okay, this loop is ending here, that loop is ending there, and it'll quantize everything to uh, the inc incoming clock. So it's very easy to sort of get on board with other musicians or even software, uh, things like Ableton Live and whatever, that will um, basically set the tempo and the clock of a unit like this. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end uh, of this presentation. 
Um, I wish, uh, kind of wish we were doing this live. I would love to take your questions, uh, but like I said, I will be uh, in the comments section um, being able to answer any of the questions that you might have had about any of the products that we uh, talked about today, or maybe some that we didn't. Um, I know I didn't pull a lot of guitars and talk about, you know, there's like an Epiphone uh, Silver Burst Les Paul, there's a lot of cool, um, uh, you know, Jacksons and Fenders and, um, you know, all sorts of acoustics and stuff like that. I purposely didn't choose those because I wanted to choose gifts that are, um, you know, nice add-ons to something that a musician already has. Um, a lot more often than not, I get customers coming in and being like, what do I get the musician who has everything? As opposed to, I have no idea what to get this person who's just starting out. Usually I get, you know, uh, my, my wife, my husband, my niece, my nephew, they have an amp, they have a guitar, they have three guitars, they have four guitars, five amps. I don't know what to get them. Here's a great selection of things uh, that you can get into that are number one, very useful, even as, as like a spare, right? If you have a spare tuner, if you have like a spare practice amp, it doesn't hurt uh, to have these things. But then also sort of circling back to these little utility boxes or, uh, you know, things like the, um, the looper slash drum machine we have here or the wireless. These are things that can be used creatively in different ways. And even if you know somebody who already has a looper, I guarantee you they don't have a looper with a drum machine in it, unless they have this already. But, you know, keep those little things in mind and don't be, don't be overwhelmed, uh, I guess is what I'm trying to say, uh, about shopping for a musician. I think a lot of people who aren't musicians, you know, maybe walking along a McQuaid uh, or any other music store and they kind of like freeze like deer in the headlights and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what any of this stuff is. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know if I'm going to buy the wrong thing. And they sort of freeze up and they shut down internally. Don't do that. If you're, if you're watching and you're not a musician, don't worry about it. Long McQuaid, we got so many great people who are so eager and willing and able to talk to anybody about um, you know, any sort of purchases uh, or any sort of questions that you have about your purchases. Will this be a good fit for somebody? Um, I don't know if this person already has this. Um, if they do, like, you know, what do I do here? Is there uh, maybe something else along these lines or in this price range that I can get? Look, we're all here to make your shopping experience better. So definitely lean on us during the, the, uh, the holiday shopping season. You know, come into store, talk to us. If you can't come into the store, call us up on the phone, um, shoot us emails to the store. We're here to help you. We're here to make your lives easier. You got enough going on during the holidays. Let us help you, okay? Um, I wanna circle back to the gift cards again. If you guys are really, really stuck and you're just like, I cannot deal with all the shopping. Um, I don't know what to get. There's too many choices or if you're just too tempted to buy something for yourself, um, definitely gift card is the way to go. If you see something here that I presented that you like, say something like the Boss Looper, right, which is 400 something dollars, if you can't stretch to that, don't worry about it. You know, you can just get a gift card, fill it up with however much you want to give, and say, hey, this is to put towards that looper that I saw in that video, you know? contribute towards the eventual purchase of you know one of these items or any of the items that are available in our stores. Um, like I said, um, we're here to help you so uh, you know as long as uh, as long as the stores are open we're here uh, available for you so do not hesitate to come in, call in or email. Um, guys, I want to thank you so so much for taking the time out of your day spending however much time it's been with me talking about all these great gift ideas. I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate your time. I'm going to be answering your questions, so hit me up with absolutely anything you got. If you want to ask me about the gifts, if you want to ask me about my guitar, if you want to ask me about my awesome mustache, you go right ahead. You ask away. Uh, all right, thank you so much again to Matt Durant, the man behind the camera, the man making me look good, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, guys.